I am, unlike um, Fred, uh, I'll be the complete um, opposite. I'm, this is my conflict of interest. One, two, three, four. Um, these are probably important ones. Um, I, I'm, I've, uh, this is the more important one. Uh, I've got, I've been funded by the Saskatchewan Pulse Growers for research purposes and Pulse Canada. And uh, I've been a vegan for the last 10 years, a vegetarian for 12 years or more, so I may be B12 deficient, so you may not be able to understand anything I'm saying. But that's just a neurological problem. Um, so for a long time, our species have been uh, consuming beans right across the planet, from Boston baked beans. Um, but here we've got the bean eater, one of the, the first by Annabelle, uh, Karachi um, from 1580. It's not to 1890. That wasn't his life. He didn't live for 200 years. Um, but um, I think this shows us that we were eating a lot of beans once, and I think they're 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 a vanishing food, unfortunately. Um, I would say that. Uh, so my, my my brief is to to tell you why they're perhaps important. They're a major source of protein. They're high fiber, low glycemic index, rich in minerals. They reduce serum cholesterol, they reduce blood pressure, so they reduce cardiovascular disease. Um, so all the, this combination is going to make them very good for diabetes. Um, but they also fix nitrogen in the soil, which is very useful, and they're a major source of, of plant protein. Um, combined with cereals would make a, a complete protein and uh, be a potential for major greenhouse gas reductions by the reduction of animal products. So. What more do you want in a food? Um, very early on, um, uh, many of us in the room uh, undertook these studies uh, where we showed that beans were a low glycemic index food. At the, at the bottom, you can see the, the bean graph. This is uh, dried legumes, eight types of dried legumes. Um, this is the tubers, various biscuit forms, breakfast cereals, breads and pasta. These are all higher in terms of their glycemic response. Um, so that was a, a, an early, an early wake-up call for the value of the bean. Um, so we, we, Gabriele showed that beans alone didn't uh, have an effect on hemoglobin A1C. But if you take them in the context of a low glycemic index diet, and these are low glycemic index diets where beans are featured. Um, they certainly probably don't harm and, and, and are likely to help um, be part of the low glycemic index and the reduction in hemoglobin A1C. Uh, uh, that, that's, that, that, uh, that slide is, is one of John's. In fact, all, all the, the, the meta-analysis I'm showing, I think, pretty much are, are John's meta-analysis. He's, he's lent them to me, so I think they're, they're valid. Uh, <laughs> Um, and uh, it's nice that uh, when you put this one to diabetologia, diabetologia put uh, put the bean eater on the front cover of the journal. So I think that was uh, was a, was a mark of the respect they paid for for John and the bean. Uh, <coughs> Vanessa, who's, who's presented here uh, with John, um, also looked at the lowering of cholesterol of pulses, and as you can see. Uh, the only thing I want you to look at is the, the diamond uh, on this side of the unity line showing that there was a reduction in cholesterol. I think, uh, that, again, those in the room have also contributed to this. Um, Jay, uh, again with John, uh, looked at hypertension, looked at uh, systolic blood pressure, um, eight trials, medium dose of, uh, of uh, a, good, a good dose of, of beans, 162 grams. Uh, follow-up of 10 weeks, um, average, and again, you see the unity line, blood pressure on the reduction side of the unity line. So again, the blood pressure reduction, so you've got cholesterol reduction, glucose reduction, blood pressure reduction. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Effie has a poster here, again with John Effie, um, looked at the, the, the sort of updated uh, an umbrella review, as it were, of, of three to 12 cohort comparisons. Um, basically, um, a larger number of subjects, 123,000 odd, 
to almost uh, um, half a million. Um, these are the numbers that one has for for various cardiovascular incidents, mortality, coronary heart disease incidents, mortality, stroke, mortality, diabetes incidents, hypertension. And you can see that certainly uh, CVD incidents, uh, shown here nicely, CHD incidents, and diabetes incidents, and hypertension incidents, all reduced um, in, in these meta-analyses. So I think uh, that builds up a very good profile, I think, for the bean. Uh, and it goes along with uh, Horton and Wirtz study, and, and Simon, who's here too, Simon Liu, uh, looking at, uh, at, at vegetable proteins and animal proteins. What they looked at was uh, high protein and fat uh, coming from either animal or vegetable origin. And obviously, the bean would fit into the vegetable protein uh, side of the equation. And what they showed was if, the, if you had high animal, looking at deciles, um, I think it was the nurse's health study, uh, looking at deciles, as you go to the, 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 the top decile, as it were, uh, you can see that animal protein uh, and fat doesn't really do any benefit. But there's a 30% reduction in CHD risk um, if you take the high uh, plant uh, protein and fat diet. So beans would contribute uh, to to that. So whichever way you cut it, uh, beans seem to seem to work. We were, to step away from this a little. We we were, we've been interested for some time um, in MRI and. Uh, uh, its effects, um, the effects of diet on MRI-induced arteriosclerosis. Um, these are, this is the picture of, of what we affectionately term Mickey Mouse. Um, you can see the internal and uh, common carotid. Um, and then you can see here, you can see at the edge of the carotid, you can see the lipid plaque. This is 2013, 14, and 16. And you can see Mickey Mouse's mouth opening, um, which is lipid, which is inside the mouth. Um, and that's what we're trying to prevent. Um, and in the, in, in, in the, uh, the, the baseline uh, analysis of, of our glycemic index study related to MRI, um, Laura Gervoli was, was able to show that um, dietary pulse intake um, in the diets. This is a baseline. This is not intervention. Um, when it was, uh, when it was, sorry, when it was plotted, um, dietary pulse intake uh, showed a reduction in vessel wall volume. In other words, the more pulses you took, um, basically, the lower your vessel wall volume as a marker of atheroma in the uh, carotid arteries. Um, this is obviously a modeled um, picture. With, with the curve smoothed out, but it's interesting. So really when you get down to about 150, which is what has been shown in the literature to reduce cardiovascular disease um, in terms of pulses, uh, 150 grams of pulse per day, um, you've got a really significant reduction in cardiovascular risk. This is lifetime stuff because it's baseline, and this was just what they were habitually eating. Um, are pulses, therefore, the nutritional analogues to ACABOs, the, uh, the alpha-glycoside hydrolase inhibitor, slowing carbohydrate absorption? And certainly, the Stopnidum study uh, showed that um, there was a reduction in, in diabetes incidence, uh, sorry, in the, ac in the ACABO, ACABOs limb. Um, so that was nice. Um, this is Sherson study in JAMA 2003. Um, and they showed a similar effect. It was a 20% reduction. Um, it showed a 49% reduction in CVD events also in this particular cohort, um, showing lower events in those taking ACABOs. We wonder whether beans would do something of the same. One would obviously have to eat a lot of beans to get that sort of effect. What about, what about the other factor? Uh, what's the other advantage of beans? Well, they they may be able to be used uh, as part of our our greenhouse gas emission plan. So livestock cattle, for example, produce about 14% of greenhouse gases. That's 
doing a life, a life cycle analysis. And uh, greenhouse gases um, uh, and global warming are very closely linked. We're all trying to, uh, to stop global warming for various reasons. And if one looks at the estimated um, CO2 emissions from per kilogram of, uh, of product, you can see that the ruminants in the red and the others in the, in the, in the blue are very low by comparison with the ruminants. And if you look right at the bottom of the others, um, you've got the pulses, the peas, beans, soy. These are the, 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 the vegetable protein sources. So these vegetable protein sources are low greenhouse gas emitters. So why do I bother to bring that up? Well, I think it's important generally to bring it up. I think one should try and do an environmental impact statement for any change in diet that we contemplate. But there's another reason because it may be related to diabetes. And this is a very interesting study that uh, Gillian Booth and Joel Ray did at St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto, a hospital, um, and uh, published uh, in 2016. They looked at gestational diabetes, the increase in gestational diabetes, um, and they looked at the temperature um, in the month before the diagnosis was made in the mother, or mother-to-be. And this is the graph that they plotted. These are the ambient temperatures um, in the month before. And then this is gestational diabetes um, <coughs> in the, the, the y-axis. And you can see this rather frightening curve. This is for Ontario. This is just for Ontario. But you can see that there's a rather frightening curve going upwards as we increase the, the temperature so the incidence of gestational diabetes increases. So one would say this is another, another result of perhaps not eating beans and not reducing greenhouse gas emissions. We will get increased global warming. So things actually, the circuit is a fairly long circuit, but I think an important one. So um, I think that's the reason for the recent evolution of more plant-based dietary guidelines for the public. Sweden, uh, first in 2009, incorporated environmental, environmental concerns into dietary guidelines, followed by the Netherlands, 2015, no more than two servings of meat per week. USA, a vegetarian diet, one of their three healthy diets recommended. China, reduce all meat consumption by 50%. Britain, eat more beans, beans and pulses, eat less red and processed meat. Belgium, make foods derived from plants the basis of every meal limit your intake of animal products. Canada, I think, is going to follow in that direction. Um, and this will make quite a group of, of nations. So uh, the reason, uh, major source of vegetable protein, uh, high fiber, low glycemic index, rich source of minerals, uh, reduces cholesterol, reduces blood pressure, reduces CVD risk, um, fixes nitrogen in the soil, and is a major source of protein for transitioning to a more plant-based diet. Thank you.